Hello everyone, and welcome to my tutorial. This is going to be a fun and informational video, and if it's not, well, then I apologize in advance. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the differences between DC motors and servo motors. Mo servo motors. In Dr. Don's class, we use DC motors for the Pee Wee Robot. Before we start, let me tell you what the Pee Wee Robot is and what it's for. This is the Pee Wee Robot. Kind of looks like Wally, huh? Like our very own fun-loving robot who falls in love after finding life on planet Earth and bringing humans back to live on it. No, how cute! For this Presidio project, I was a part of the coding group, and one of my jobs was to create a practice robot to run programs on from when we finished building the actual robot. A part of this job was not only to build the robot, but to program it to move, set obstacles in front of it, and go towards a set point on a plane. <coughs> and go towards a set point on a plane. In order to make our robot move, we had the choice to choose between using servo motors or DC motors. Spoiler alert, we use DC motors. Why, might you ask? Well, it's simple. One big difference between using a servo motor and a DC motor is the fact that a servo motor usually doesn't rotate past 180 degrees back and forth. Whereas a DC motor can spin completely 360 as long as it has power connected to it. When you're having a robot move around, you kind of need the wheels to move freely around its shaft. You can't have it move freely if it's constantly stopping at about 180 degrees. Now, I know what some of you engineering buffs out there are thinking. Wait, Alicia, but there are servo motors out there that allow it to rotate freely around their shaft. And for you guys out there thinking that, yes, there are servos out there that do spin freely around their shaft. They usually have the notation continuous rotation on their body. However, another reason why we use DC motors over servo motors is because they're much, much faster. Most DC motors are really fast and able to run at 5,000 revolutions per minute, meaning that the wheels are able to turn 5,000 times in one minute. The reason why DC motors run so much faster is because they have a two-wire connection that connects directly to the power source. The speed on a DC motor is controlled using pulse width modulation, the act of the power source strobing on and off in order to control the motor's speed. When power is only given for a fraction of the time, it makes the motor appear as if it's running weaker. But if the power is given at full force for the whole time allotted, it makes the motor appear as if it's running stronger. The pulse for this technique is so rapid that the motor appears to be continuously spinning without a stutter. Servos on the other hand run much slower. They run on a three wire connection, power, ground, and control. The power wire connects straight to the power on the Arduino, the little microcontroller you run programs on. The power wire is the only place you collect power from. However, where the servo lacks in power and speed, it makes up for it in control, hence the name of the last wire, the control wire. The servo is much more precise than the DC motor, able to go the exact rotation command at the exact rotational speed you tell it to. The function of this motor is to receive a control signal representing a desired output position and applying power to the motor in order to rotate the shaft to that exact position. Servos use the pulse width modulation technique too, but it's used differently. In a DC motor, pulse width modulation determines speed, but in a servo, pulse width modulation determines which way the shaft will rotate. For example, the center position for a servo is 90 degrees. A long pulse between 90 and 180 will make the servo turn clockwise. A short pulse between 90 and 0 will make the servo turn counterclockwise. In short, a servo motor wouldn't work well for the wheels of a free-roaming robot. It would work better controlling specific tasks such as controlling a rudder on a boat or moving an arm or leg on a robot within a certain range. A DC motor works best not only because of speed, but also because of the amount of power DC motors can draw from their power source and the fact that DC motors can spin freely as long as it's connected to a power source. If I were to give out an award for the best motor for a free-roaming robot, the winner would be the DC motor. However, it doesn't mean the servo motor is a bad motor. Just like people, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. Where the servo motor fails, the DC motor prevails, and vice versa. It all just depends on the job you need the motor to complete. With that said, both motors are perfect in their own way. But for the purposes of this project, we use a DC motor. Hopefully I was able to clear some things up for you. There's a link to the website I used to get a majority of my information in the description box below. If you come up with other ways to use DC motors or servo motors, leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'm out.